Hello peoples, my name is Mars and this is a local cryptid broadcast brought to you by your neighborhood cryptids enhancing our understanding of the supernatural one sighting at a time. Today we will be drawing gear phobias as cute monster girls, but first, a word from our patrons. Ages they have spent the school to a mold. They used it to choose photos, to post online, and to choose actors for movies, and to choose people worthy of love. That would have it no other way. Living by this mold and never stray. What does it fit to close this blood to boil? Hatred and disgust that clings to skin. I will fit this mold. Ben Malian and the sculpture. Romulus and Jerome King Midas himself. I will fit this mold, even if it means destroying myself. Well, that was interesting. On to the video! So for the first girl, I did not do myself any favors and decided to start off with cacophobia or the fear of ugliness. So while drawing most fears as monster girls, in theory, is really easy. You know, they're scared of spiders, you draw a spider girl. Really cute, really simple, really easy. But because cacophobia is the fear of ugliness, there's much more of a subjective aspect to it to where I didn't really know what to draw her as. So I tried to instead encompass what it was like for people that have this phobia. So once I decided that, I knew that I kind of wanted her to be a Frankenstein monster girl. Yes, I know Frankenstein is the name of the doctor but the monster doesn't really have a name, or if he does have one, I don't rem care to remember it. So she kind of Frankensteins herself up a bit since people that have this phobia often spend a lot of money and time trying to overcorrect in response to their fear of being ugly. And because beauty standards are so subjective, I wanted to pay homage to what teaches her and everyone else what it means to be beautiful and what it means to be ugly and that would be social media so she's on her phone you can't see the background yet but it will be like a broken down tv to show that these the concepts of beauty are false and they're often really eurocentric so i decided to try and make her beautiful in that way so she has pale skin blue eyes blonde hair the whole shebang I did want to highlight that some cultures do go in and out of being fetishized, so I gave her, you know, thicker lips, um, a larger caboose because of fetishization of African features. She has a couple of swatches of like more tanned skin for when that was the thing. I think it's still a thing. I don't know. I try to ignore it now and patches of skins that are presumably eastern because of the fetishization of just Asians in general that is extremely popular right now. Not to get a little too real for this character, but it's really subjective, everyone's beautiful. I did originally intend to give her broken rose tinted glasses to play off of that stereotype that, you know, uh, through rose tinted glasses, everything is beautiful, everything's amazing, you don't notice, like, toxic behavior, but hers are broken, so she is incapable of just seeing anything through that lens anymore, but I forgot, so I'm sorry we missed out on that storytelling feature, if you decide to draw fan art of this character, if you could give her <laughs> broken rose tinted glasses, that would be very much appreciated. That kind of completes my thoughts for her design. I gave her, you know, that half cropped sweater thing, a the, uh, lingerie as outerwear kind of look, a pleated skirt, just really big fashion trends right now. I realize that now that um that might not age well, and people looking at this in the future will be like, what the fuck is she wearing? That's not clothing, that's just fabric. But it is what it is, that we are a product of our circumstances. On to the next girl, please. 
I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, I have a lot of nothing to say about this character. Earlier, I implied that phobias, where you're scared of actual objects or animals, were much easier to draw since, I don't know, there's just a much stronger correlation. But I lied. This is girl is meant to be the fear of mirrors, and I hated every second of trying to design her. So, there weren't a lot of monsters I could see working for this, and while I do think mirrors can be a really good tool in horror movies, really spooky, really fun, trying to figure out a monster was not easy. I did have a friend suggest drawing them as a vampire, which, hindsight, I wish I did. But at the time, I decided against it because I thought that there wasn't a strong enough correlation. It would just be a girl holding a mirror, which doesn't really make her the monster of mirrors, if you know what I'm trying to say. So I decided to make her an android girl. Does that sound extremely left field to you? Because it does to me. <laughs> Are androids even considered monster girls? Probably not, but here we are. I thought the segments, if I made them shiny enough, would look like mirrors, and so I gave them like knobby bits, I gave them that darker outline, an extremely reflective surface, and oh, I don't appreciate it. It's my least favorite drawing for this video, but I had already drawn it three different times, or attempted to draw one three different times, and at a certain point, I just have to post something to fill this space. Didn't, didn't have to be good. Um, so yeah, that was my thought process for that one. People with the fear of mirrors often have either a fear of things in the mirror being distorted reality. You know, so there's discrepancy between what's really there and what isn't. So the vampire idea, honestly, probably fit much better. But here we are. Uh, another interpretation for people that have the fear of mirrors, they could just be um, scared of their own reflection in particular, they have body dysmorphia, or just really bad uh, self-image issues. And I tried to convey that by uh, giving her like really long bangs, like she doesn't want to see herself, it's all over her body, the mirrors. And I love her hair. It is the only part of her design I like. And it has nothing to do with the prompt. It's just cute, fluffy, white cloud hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't have much else to say about this because there weren't a lot of design choices that were going on. Um, her pose is cool, I guess. <laughs> Can you guess today's uh, theme for the video yet? Uh, I don't know. If you haven't commented, do it or the patron will come and get you. Anyhow, uh, this one is just, this like drawing is just kind of filler so that we can get to my favorite drawing the video, which is the fear of dolls, pediophobia, which sounds really like pedophilia, but I swear it's not. Uh, I guess, I don't know if we can really call this a design choice, but I put a giant mirror in the background. My first attempt at drawing this character, I thought that I could make her skin like broken shards of a mirror, get that seven years of bad luck thing going on, or is it eight years? Uh, comment below and tell me if it's seven or eight years, I suppose. I could just look it up, but, you know, comment, interact with the video, please. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, I think I talked for four minutes so we can get on to the next character. Woo I honestly don't have much more to say about this character either, but I do like her so much more and I have a little bit to say. So uh, this one is the fear of, ch of not children, the fear of dolls. Do not let the, p the acronym fool you. Uh, this one is a pretty straightforward fear, since it is a fear of an object. So I was going to draw a cute little doll girl. At first she had puppet lines coming down from her lips, but that was a little too creepy for me. Made her feel a little bit wooden. I want all of these characters to be simpable, you know, kind of character you could simp for. And 
the doll mouth was not doing that for me. Uh, so I did give her these really cute ball joints. I think that they're endearing, actually. They're really, they're really cute to me. Um, and I wanted her to kind of be based off of those, um, like, these Japanese porcelain dolls. So she has, like, that darker, cool-toned hair, and then really pale, uh, slightly warm-tinted skin going on. And then I decided to just kind of double down, but make it modern. I decided to give her, like, that Lolita-esque clothing which is really popular in Japan and is very doll-like to me. So, frills everywhere! Everywhere! I love it. I intended this character to look Japanese, but because of the hat, I guess, she comes off as French. Maybe it's also the colors, but I love the color choices dearly, and so I'm not going to change it. You can fight me. She, I also, uh, kind of last minute, decided to give her these like red cheek things that you sometimes get on dolls. At first I thought they would be too creepy, but I honestly really did love them. Uh, normally when I draw girls, my favorite part is to go through the skin and make them look blushy and cute, but for this one, I did kind of want to try and keep her plasticky looking which was a little sad, but I got over it. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't understand the fear of dolls, but these are phobias, so they're not rational and something to be sensitive to people who have, since phobias, unlike fears, have extreme effects on people. Like, it has to be almost uh, semi-debilitating fear, and so I'm not trying to make fun of the phobia, but um, whenever it is used in a horror, I find it kind of funny, and it's not even because they're so small, it's just the, like, I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up with dolls, and so I'm so used to making them say like dumb things, and them just being something I have complete control over. Or maybe that's what's meant to make it scary. The fact that something that you use, usually have so much control over, one of the only things you can control as a child, is now turned against you. Um, I don't know why I got a little, a little deep there, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> uh, if you have any fears you want to see, comment them below. I will not promise that I will draw them or draw them anytime soon, but you can still say them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I also really enjoyed, um, just like the shoes on this character. They uh, were loosely inspired off of like actual Lolita shoes, not Lolita as in that movie about like I think they're I think they're prostitutes. I'm not entirely sure, but anyhow, I also gave her this like wind up doll thing on her back because I thought it was really cute. But I'm actually not sure if you can have those in conjunction with joints like this for them to move. Maybe a doll expert will come and crucify me for this decision. But I like it, so, you know, they can come at me, I suppose. <laughs> also, I'm sorry if you heard a lot of cat-like sounds. It's my cat otter who hers extremely loudly and I am not going to try and edit it out. Cryptid is not responsible for any of the following developments of odd or alarming sexual feelings towards dolls, mutilated or emaciated women, robots, your phone, or your own reflection, nightmares, boiling blood, sleep deprivation, vomiting, or itching, dramatic increases in hunger, decrease in inspiration, or cancer.